Photography has always been with me. My father photographed. He had um, friends that would come over and they would talk shop, but they mainly talked about the cameras. And I used to pose for my father. Uh, he would use a light meter and I would have to not move. And he would write down the, you know, the aperture and the, he'd write like, he was very methodical. Mm -hmm. Well, my approach to photography was very different. Mm. So, like, um, street photography was like something that uh, fascinated me mm. because the art of photography in street mm. photography is capturing that moment. Well, that's the Invisible Man. And actually, um, I've always been fascinated of of how other artists affect other ar artists. Ramar Bearden, he loved jazz. He loved Duke Ellington. And um, August Wilson loved Ramar Bearden. And um, so after seeing August Wilson's plays, I was so inspired, I decided to go to Pittsburgh, the Hill District and photograph some of his characters. I photographed, like this image here is part, because some of the settings were in a pool house. And let's see, are there any more August Wilson? But this came out of that, but it represents Harlem everywhere, because there's a Harlem in all the cities. It's where the heart of black people where they live and that's where their experience is. This is part of the Invisible Man series which is taken in Harlem. This is a August Wilson. The restaurant yeah. this piece yeah. here. So the setting was of all these beautiful words because August Wilson was a, um, he was a dishwasher. It's beautiful. Maybe a good I took a lot of photography, actually, because I, I, ne I didn't really like to talk. I hardly ever talked. So this is like, you know, my photographs say so much more than me. Actually, your work is way ahead of your mind. So maybe we could have a look at um, so the don't walk. Um, so this piece was I had done about New York and acid rain, which is now with the climate change and all of that. So, but it was also how the presence of black folks. This was taken in New York downtown, but this also photograph with the images, you know, you could be in Africa or you could be anywhere. It's interesting because a lot of the topics that we're talking of today, like for example, this one, ab abhorsion, which means abhor and abortion. And this is like, uh, uh, a male figure. So that's where that comes along. And it's in front of an uh, abortion clinic. I had my first exhibition at a hairdresser's place. And there was like a hairdresser place because photography, the photography world, is not the same. There was no, especially for a black, female, and uh, photography was not even considered an art form. There was a big debate. And so this hairdresser was opening up, black hairdresser, not far from Bloomingdale's, which was a high end. And so he asked me if I wanted to have a show there. And I used this 
photograph. But Romar Bearden, Roydi Carava, uh, Moneta Sleet, but a lot of really artists that I admired came to see my show, the opening of my show, because it wasn't far-fetched to have a, 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 an exhibition, but to have it at a, because there were, weren't other avenues for photography at the time that I knew of. This selection is made by Arthur Yefa of your, and I know that sh he is a huge fan of your work. When did you meet? Actually, I was living in Montclair, and that was in, eight, in the 80s, and I received a phone call from Arthur Jaffa. I had never met him, and somehow he, he knew people in the music, and my ex was a musician, and he called me. He wanted to thank me. I was to thank me for what, because he had just won a lot of awards on um, Daughters of the Dusk, and everyone back then was talking about how beautiful the photography was. And that was one of the main things, right? And there was the debate, well, we love the photography. And so it was Arthur Jaffa that called me up and I was like, oh. And he said, I just want to let you know, this was his first, that part of my, you were part of my inspiration uh, uh, of your images that I used that inspired me to do different setups for Daughters of the Dusk. And I was so honored and at the, at the time um, just, you know, having someone, you know, just give a little love, give you a little props and value because it was, you know, uh, I was very much alone. It was just, just things they wouldn't even take me seriously or they didn't even look at my work or it was like, you know, this young little girl. <laughs> I, I, it was, no one took me seriously. So this was taken um, while well, I was on the road traveling and I had my son and I just saw it. And I didn't have a lot of photographs of myself because I was the one that was photographing. So I, I did that. I have, you know, several self-portraits, but that was one of them. And then when I did the show at the Brooklyn Museum, the curate, the, when the curators, Rijeko Hockley, she chose that and she chose that work. I really like, like working with different curators or people come in and edit because they see things that, you know, I wouldn't have. This photograph is one of the favorites. So could you maybe tell the story behind the, this? So at the time there was these boys mainly, there might have been a few, a few dozen boys that were missing or that had been found killed in Atlanta and I remember like reading of the story and it was always like, well, that's, there's, these boys didn't have dads, they didn't really have family, this is a big problem in, in, in you know, black culture, but specifically they were speaking of in Atlanta. And so I just thought that, well, well, you know, this is happening because they don't have fathers or, you know, or they're making it seem like to justify this, like, um, so when I was at, I guess, the Cool Jazz Festival, I saw these, this family in the park, and there was a whole park, there was a whole family there, and the father was there, and it's a loving family. So that's why I photographed that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 